Charterman, Charterman, Brian. Charterman, 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 Brian. Three car mix, Twister, Hell of Six, Hell of Wacky Nick. Take a bad hit, take a bad hit, Charterman. Look, I know this conversation is going to end with me getting shot in the face. Hey, what's up you guys? Shardimus Prime here doing another Hot Toys figure review on the Transformers Optimus Prime Starscream version TF-001. Gotta give a big thanks to Comic and Figure Addicts for making this review possible. This is a loaner figure from them. And if you're trying to pick up your figures, you can check them out. Link below. And looking at the packaging over here, this looks really, really cool. I like this gridded pattern. Very G1-esque. We get the Generations over there. Hasbro over there. We get this nice metallic Autobot logo. It says Hot Toys right down there. Nothing going on on the side. On the very back over here, you get that same G1-like pattern. Then on the side, you get the Autobot logo right over there. At the very top, it says Optimus Prime. And then we can lift this up, do the Hot Toys plop. Come on, Hot Toys plop. Come on, come on, come on. All right, there we go. Then lifting up over here, we get this read-up on the Optimus Prime Starscream version. If you want to go ahead and read it, go ahead and pause it now. And then there's all the people responsible for making the figure. Then we can lift this. And then there's the figure right there. All right, let's get to it and crack this thing open. Damn. And here's Optimus Prime with the Starscream wings, Null Rays, and his made-up blaster right over here. Uh, this whole concept is kind of interesting to me. It does look pretty cool. I mean, when you see this, it looks pretty magnificent, especially the paint throughout the figure. The whole thing that he doesn't transform is irritating to me. I can't lie about that, especially for the price point. There's other Optimus Prime figures, even like a G1 Minton package one. If you find one of those for like over 300 bucks, that's a deal, I think. Or you can get this at aftermarket, you know, for 300 something, you know. I mean and he transforms and everything so you know uh, Hot Toys is competing with all these other Optimus Primes out there and I'm not sure how well this is going to do but it does look cool uh, as far as design goes I think I have a problem with some things I don't like that we don't see his original blaster that frustrates me but the paint apps are pretty awesome and the articulation is not too shabby so anyway let's take a closer look at his base and his accessories and then we'll take a closer look at Optimus Prime now as always you want to read through the directions before messing with the figure as you could possibly break it. Now before I remove Prime from his base over here, I just think it's weird how it's shaped. You get this huge crater right here in the asphalt, but Prime is so large that you can only fit him standing on the space if he's standing on the edges around that crater. And it doesn't make a whole ton of sense to me because it's like he's just standing on a flimsy little piece right here. You know what I mean? It looks like that's just going to crumble under his weight. It just doesn't look realistic at all. You know, you'd think he'd be standing where the huge dent was. But aside from that, the paint and sculpt that we get on this looks really good. I like how we get the Autobot symbol right over here, just plastered right there. And then you get some really nice paint variation, really good looking sculpted detail on this asphalt. I just think that looks really, really good. A lot of concrete and whatnot, just all this rubble looks really, really nice. I believe this is a reused base. I think this came from a Superman base or something like that, but yeah, I don't think it's very appropriate for the Optimus Prime. Just doesn't seem like it's big enough, you know? You, you need a larger base if you're gonna have him standing on here. And it's pretty heavy. This has some weight to it. And then you do get this clear stand that just plugs right in, and then you get this taint cradle right over there, so that works. And then you could loosen this with a screw and shift that up and down. So here's a look at all the accessories that we get with Optimus Prime over here. So this whole concept of Starscream Prime Parts being added onto Optimus. It basically looks like Optimus Prime murdered Starscream and then ripped his wings off and his null rays off and just packed them on to himself. And I don't think that ever happened. If it ever happened in a comic book or something like that, let me know. Or a video game, maybe. I don't know. But to my knowledge, that never happened. And I think that's totally out of character for him to do that. He comes with the two null rays. You get the two wings. You get these two different types of attachments to the back of Optimus Prime. You get two sets of hands. One has articulated fingers and the other one's the blaster wielding hand. And then you get Optimus Prime's blaster? No. Uh, this is Optimus Prime's blaster right over here, man. Th this one. This is just something they made up again. You know, again, me thinking it's a little pretentious to be like, No! We got a cooler gun than that! We're gonna make this one right here! I don't know what they're thinking over there. But it does look good. You know, I will say that it's painted very well. The sculpt isn't bad. It's not like it's like a crappy gun. It's just something just totally different that... I wasn't expecting, and I don't know if this is from any comic book or video game either, so please let me know if it is. And if you really get in there, you can see the details. So the browns over the silver looks really nice. So it's a good looking blaster, sculpted out nicely, just not a fan of the overall design. And same deal with these wings over here. They look good, you know, as far as the detail came out and the paint apps. Of course, you can't dog that. That is just masterfully done as far as the paint goes. But, you know, the Decepticon symbol is supposed to be, you know, right over here. At least it's upside down, but it's supposed to be a little bit more over here, right? No? Huh? Huh? But nice color variation, nice sculpt. 
and everything. And you do get a couple of hinges and you know points of articulation. You can move these forward and back. If you push this all the way in, you won't be able to hinge this piece right here. So you can move that out a little bit, and that'll give you clearance that this doesn't rub against that. You don't get any paint chipping, so you can move that in and out. These null rays are painted incorrectly, I think. They're supposed to be a gray color, right? Aren't his null rays gray, just like the rest of his body? You know, kind of like this color right here, which is a little off in its own, but it's old and rusted and battle-worn, so it's not totally inappropriate. But this part right here, I think, should have been the same silverish grayish color that we get. At least we get some nice silver dry brushing, though. It does follow the model of Starscream's null rays, so at least it does look accurate as far as the sculpt goes, but I just wish this was painted differently. Again, the paint on these are fantastic. I love how this dirt looks over this metallic blue. That looks really nice. Unfortunately, he has salad fingers. Right? Those are salad fingers right there. Big old creepy long fingers. We do get rotation on the thumb with these, and then you can bend them at the thumb as well. Uh, you don't get rotation on the fingers though, but they all bend right here at the knuckle, but not all the way. And then you can get them bending once and twice again right there in each of the fingers. So, yeah, when you get them in a fist like this, it doesn't really look so great. But, you know, I don't know, these salad fingers. And then here's looking at one of his gun-wielding hands, you know. He has a set of gun-wielding hands to go with the articulated hands. Painted very nicely. I like the sculpt on this one a lot more. But I will say, I did have a moment of fear trying to get him to hold this blaster. Like, trying to get this wedged in there. I was like, oh, I hope I don't scratch anything. And even now, as I'm doing this, I'm like, okay, I don't want to push it much more than that. Yeah, I'll have it just rest like that. Still not really getting the finger all the way up over here. This isn't mine, so I'm not going to push it more than that. And then you get two pieces of each of these different attachments for the wing. So this one goes directly into that wheel section, which I'll show off in a second. And then this just goes directly into the red piece on the side. So this is what I mean by the wheel section, and I don't like it. Uh, having these big old wheels back here, come on, man. But it is painted nicely, so you can't dog the paint on this. It does have that nice speckled look to it. Especially when we look at it from the front over here, you can see that little backpack thing. I don't like it. But uh, to show off the attachment section, so you want to take the ports that have the smaller connector right there and you want to pull this little flap down and then pull the flap down on this side right here and then what you're going to do is you're going to fold these up so that you get this shape going on and you can plug that in right there. I actually think it's a little bit easier to plug the wing on first and so let's plug that in right there and then have this plugged in and come on there it goes so yeah it's a little scary and plug that in and get a little tighter kind of droops on me a little bit i don't prefer this look by the way out of the two of them and then that's how prime looks from the front with having these wings on here with the wheel section attached and i don't like it and another thing about this whole star scream concept i hate the fact that optimus prime is sporting the decepticon symbol that irritates the hell out of me prime does not wear no decepticon symbol man come on now the good thing about this figure is that you can remove these wheel parts right there so you can take that out and remove this right over here and now that looks more a little bit like prime uh, I don't like these giant gaping holes it would be nice if they gave plugs or something for that but still I'm glad that you can remove those that looks a lot better and that's what these other pieces are for again I recommend plugging this part actually into the wings first and then just plug it right over here into the side of the figure you want to make sure everything's lined up because you don't want to ruin the paint on these even those little silver connecting parts have some nice paint apps on them but getting this all to fit in can be a little tricky and then there you go you can actually get this rearranged any way you like yeah so if I'm gonna have to set creep wings on him I'm gonna keep it like that you know that, that looks a lot better I think now when you first open this up this little piece right over here is separated from the null ray so you do have to just port that on I do like the paint on this this still looks really really nice but anyway getting this plugged in right here and I'm glad that on the inside of this you get this little rubbery plastic piece right in there and you use that to attach to the forearm and I like it in that plugged in like so so that looks pretty good then you also have the option to plug this onto his shoulder right here so you could remove this piece then you want to turn this around and I actually prefer having this divot going inward and then that just slips right over it stays on there okay it's a little bit loose but you know it works and then adding the wings to this just makes it very difficult to make the argument that this doesn't look cool it, it does man I mean that that's pretty awesome I think that's dope the only problem is is that you have to really get him leaning forward for him to balance himself his ankle joints aren't really the best so he's looking at the head sculpt and I can't say I really like this very much I don't know it's not terrible I mean it still looks like Optimus Prime you show this to anybody they'll be like oh yeah that's Optimus Prime but as far as the details go like the mouth card I feel like it's just a little too big 
And then there's a the part with the helmet over here that looks kind of weird too. I feel like this area is a little bit too small and the eyes do look like they're a little far apart from each other. But you do get some really good paint on this speckled dirt right there on the mouth guard. Get some nice rust right here in this vented crest area. The dirt right there on the side of his helmet looks great. He has some parts where you get some lighter blue along with that metallic blue coming around right here. See that? That looks really nice. Now this guy does have his light up feature where you remove this right here. You can insert the three batteries that he comes with and then you just Turn that switch on, put this right back, and then there are the glowing eyes, and that looks great. I'm really digging that a lot. That looks pretty awesome. Again, I think the eyes are kind of far apart from each other, but still, I mean, that looks pretty sweet. The only thing is I wish there was a separate switch for the Matrix of Leadership. You can see it kind of glowing right over there, but we can just go ahead and open this up, and there it goes, and you can see it shining. Looking at the detail on the inside looks pretty cool. I don't know how accurate that is. It looks a little inaccurate to me from what I've seen in the past, but close enough I guess then you can just pull this matrix out right there you can see the blue light shining and looking at this guy it's a very milky blue color that they use there which is a little bit strange but nice gold paint on this nice silver paint you can see the little pieces right there where it connects it's not very difficult to pick out so that's pretty good and you just close these up and that works out pretty nicely only thing is that it's still glowing but these are tinted enough where it doesn't stick out too bad just from the side smokestacks are painted really well that looks pretty awesome I am a little bummed out that the chest doesn't stick out a little bit farther I feel like his chest should be just a little bit beefier right over here. And then he's got his dork sticking out over there too. What the hell? Uh, uh, that shouldn't be sticking. I know that's supposed to be there, but not sticking out that much, man. You know, but uh, otherwise, get some really nice rust over here. And that looks pretty good. So I'm liking the dirt on this too. And that red is really nice and vibrant. Get some nice dirt over the yellow and the red. Just throughout, looks really awesome. Look at his legs. You can see the speckledness right there. And his giant legs look great too, so that's pretty cool. I like that they use this translucent yellow plastic right here for his toes. This tank looks pretty sweet right there. These are rubber tires. You can pick at these a little bit and feel that they are rubber. I like that. Even though it doesn't function, they don't roll at all. You know, doesn't transform. Look at the bottom of his feet look pretty good right here too. Got some nice looking pistons on the inside of his legs. And here's looking at the back of the figure. I really like that they have that dirt right there in the treads. Articulation on this guy is pretty decent, even though I think the MP10 has better articulation. And that guy transforms. So you cannot look up with this one. That, that's very, very frustrating for me. You can't get him to look up. He does look down, though, pretty well. And he can get him turning side to side. And he has a little bit of neck pivot. He has an armpit joint that turns inward that much. And you can also get it shifting up and down over there. You can get the shoulders moving outward that much. That's pretty far. And you can get the arms swinging forward, too. He does have a bicep swivel. He does have a 90-degree bend at the elbow. And then he does have this swivel thing going on right here on the inside of the wrist and then he does have a ball joint at the wrist as well he has a pretty decent diaphragm joint over here uh, it does this thing kind of like the Iron Man die cast figures where it separates so it's separated right now and then I just pushed it in so it has a button right there so you could lift that up then you could turn this side to side over here and you can get him crunching so he crunches very far forward and you can get him crunching very far backwards too so I like that and then you can just put that back. Then he does have some waist swivel right here. I don't get that detaching thing like on the diaphragm joint, but it does shift left and right just a little bit. And you get a decent amount of pivot on here too, so you can get some good pivot. He does have this hinge right here at the hips where he can swing that downward, and you can get his legs moving outward that much. They can move forward, they can move backward. You do get a swivel right here, and then you do get a knee bend that goes at 90 degrees. I don't like his small toes, dang. But anyway, he has this little piece right here that moves downward and it doesn't really help anything I mean it has cool pistons right there but yeah you can't really move the heel back more than that and that's a little frustrating his toe articulation actually bends down more than it does move up and he does have really good ankle pivot though one thing that does win points for me about this figure is how tall he is he's standing at about 12 and a half inches tall then here's our Hot Toys Prime next to the MP04 Optimus Prime slash MP01 and the MP10 TRU Optimus Prime as far as the weight goes this guy right here is almost as heavy as this one this guy weighs a ton he's got a ton of die cast so he's much heavier but this guy comes with a trailer and everything so if you're going to spend three to four hundred bucks on an Optimus Prime, I actually recommend this one over this one. And then to compare Optimus to a regular Hot Toys figure, here he is next to the Avengers Bruce Banner. And then here's Optimus Prime next to the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. Oh, come on. I know you're a good guy, Optimus. Please don't hurt me. Please. Ah, oh, thanks, man. 
<laughs> so I'm not gonna say this is a bad figure. I mean, you can get him into some really cool poses. I like this pose a lot. And I do think the paint looks amazing. The sculpt I have problems with, you know. But I do think there's other Optimus Prime figures for around the same price point that are worth getting over this one. I just do. So I cannot highly recommend this one. But, you know, you know what you're getting if you're gonna pay for something like this. Anyway, I hope you guys liked my review. If you did, please hit the like button. Click any of these boxes over here for more shart in your face. Please check out my Patreon account if you want to support the channel. Also, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and go to shartimusprime.net for a photo gallery of images from this review. I'll catch you guys later. Peace. The only problem is that there's not a separate switch for his late...